up, what up, what up, y'all? This is your girl, Lana Tulane, and... It's me, it's me, it's LP. I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> that one he's never done on the show yet, y'all. That's right. That was a new one, that was a new one. Welcome back, y'all. This is Dallas's number one international online radio show. Period. Period. Yes, indeed, the outlet radio, y'all. We have a very special guest on the line right now, ready to speak to us in the entire world. Uh, owner, founder, CEO, executive producer of YBM, straight out of New Orleans, y'all. Michael Willis, what's good with you? So good. What's happening with you? We Man. good. We good, man. We good. We are awesome. We're blessed. Thank you so much for being on air tonight. How are you doing? I'm great, actually. I mean, it's an honor that you know you're having me on your show tonight. Absolutely, mm-hmm. absolutely. It's an honor that you are on the air tonight because we got a lot coming. We want to pick your brain about a lot of things because I know you're knowledgeable about just, you know, a lot of things going on in the industry. I know you got a lot going on for this year. So first things first, how I begin all my shows, Michael, where are you originally from? New Orleans, Louisiana, West St. Brown. In the city. <laughs> That's what's up. That I actually had the honor in visiting uh, for New Year's, so that was what's up. Um, how would you say, like, your upbringing um, influenced what you do now in the industry? Well, actually, um, my upbringing basically got me into the industry that I'm in. Uh, and you come from New Orleans, you know, you striving for something to be in, like, uh, entertainment and music basically kind of geared me to a different direction from where I was in. Right. So, um, I gotta just really say thank you to entertainment that got me into the direction. Because other than that, I could have been lost like everybody else out here in the street. Absolutely. And how how early did you realize that, you know what I'm saying, things like that, like music in, in New Orleans and the environment that you in, would bring you out or have such a, a positive impact, you know, in your life? When did you realize that? I was actually 15 years old. Uh, mm. 1986, I saw Jackson State Band. Nice. Uh, do a a war show, mm-hmm. uh, Motown '36, I think, mm-hmm. and that kind of influenced me. Maybe actually wanted to stay geared into the band, and I became drum major. And out of that experience, it just took me to another level of uh, entertainment and understanding what entertainment was all about. Uh, it's actually, every Friday and Saturday to come up with a routine to give the people some uh, excitement. So that part of it. The other parts of music, but right. that was my first experience doing the band. Right, right, wow. So LB like, yeah, Landry, Puppy Up Band, was my first experience to life, basically. It saved my life. Nice, right, very nice, right. very nice. And I never would have ever, ever thought that you were a drummer. That's super dope because I actually was in band my freshman year of high school and I played percussions too, so that's real dope. Don't do your face like LP. Yeah, I, I did professional. <laughs> I believe you. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. So, um, Michael, tell us some of the things like that you learned or- earlier on in the game. You know, once you started working with some of the major artists that you've had the honor to work with. You know, today. Okay. Well, in 1993, uh, we had a company called Smoke One Records mm-hmm. with an artist named Trey. Mm-hmm. Uh, he was basically the underground king in our market. Uh, and we did very well. We were selling 70,000 copies out the front. Oh, wow. Uh, 1994, um, we actually met Master P in 1994, and he came down and did the Downtown Hustle album. And mm. when that happened, uh, it took us to another level of business. Right. Uh, uh, I remember that album. We had a big movement going, but P kind of had the distribution thing going. Mm-hmm. So that was something different that mm-hmm. everybody else couldn't do. Right. Back then. Because he had the 80 20 deal, right? Yeah, it was, some, it was a P&D deal. Basically, what he did was he figured out how to market himself without giving the major company all upfront money. Right. To, and they claim that they want to market you. So basically what happened is a lot of the companies, they'll take $250,000 from you, $250,000 from me, $250,000 from five more companies mm-hmm. and come up with a $3 million budget and, talk, and say that they're going to use that budget to market you and your project. Mm-hmm. So what happens is this. When you go to work 9 to 5, you're going to hire your staff to work 9 to 5 regardless. So if it's Master P Project, Puppet Project, JV Project, it didn't matter. Right. These two are going to get Valerie to work for five projects, but 
you're going to be under the impression that your budget was your budget, their budget was their budget. Nah, don't be under the same hours for the same pay regardless. Right. So when he realized that and figured out how to uh, thank them and not give them that big upfront money towards marketing, he decided to take it to the street and do his own market, mm-hmm. which was smart. Extremely smart, right? Right. So then uh, he knew the, the he knew certain things that other people didn't know. That's all. I, you know, I don't want to give away all the secrets of what we do and how we do it. But right, right. he knew how to attack the street, and we took the streets, we took it by storm. We dealt with program directors one on one. We dealt with mixed show DJs one on one, and we, you know, we we got some love. Some people didn't receive it at the beginning. Some mm-hmm. people, mm-hmm. you know, wasn't in the whole group of it. But then when it popped, it popped. Right, right. And that's, and it's, I mean, it's real too because, you know, since it wasn't as popular or wasn't as, you know, people weren't doing it like that. It just wasn't right. prevalent in the industry to be busting moves like that. And the fact that now you guys have come so far with busting what? moves like that, I mean, I know that's like a major accomplishment in your career and everybody that you've worked with. Um, and, and yeah, what, uh huh, go ahead. We've been blessed. Honestly, we've been blessed. Um, in, in my career, you know, I didn't, I didn't deal with Dave and them before. Miss T, Ghetto Twins, Big Boy, we had a lot. We had a lot of company a while back. Right, right. He knew a lot of, like I say, he, he just did something that finessed it very fast. Everybody finessed that they own for that station in it. Mm. I'm gonna make a word up. <laughs> he, uh, he finessed it and, and he bossed it and. Uh, he made people really respect us out, and he took even bounce. Well, he took it to another level. Like right. we have bounce music, but he made a different sound out of right. it. Uh, with a stop and style and a fifth wall weavy and a mystical. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. You know, so and he he knew how to do certain things with producers and get the best out of. Them. Yeah. And I'm not saying that the producer didn't know what they was doing. It was just that he found the sound and ran with it. Mm-hmm. And you know. And became the, the I, 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 I got a, I, I got a That's my big homie. We've been friends for over 27 years. Uh, and what I like about him, I'm going to you know, speak highly of it. He allowed me to be me, and I allowed him to be him. Right, right. Right, right. And that's, how, know, the best, so. that, that's how the best friendships, partnerships, business shits last. When you would just allow that other person to just be who they are, because then you could just be 100. You know what I'm saying? You can bring to the table what you feel that you best bring. Uh, because it's you and then vice versa and then y'all get to just bring you know what I'm saying the best across the board correct well you know I, and I I know I've been a teller that's his dividend but you know he took it to another level like I said uh, he, he took the hood to Hollywood mm-hmm. I stayed in the hood you know what I'm saying I, I love the hood uh, I kept it the way I was and uh, honestly I love it the way I am and I, I like what he is uh, but even with with, with that, I mean, I met a lot of celebrities in my time. But boss is, I've been a boss in my own life, my own lane, and he's a boss in his own lane. Right. I took absolutely. over the club, and I, I originated the club series. Actually, when you came back from UD, I originated that in 1999. And I ran for it in 11 and a half years. Nice. Oh, wow. And wow. every single Friday, I did the FEMA Friday thing with Frida, the Jules and Tuesday, and all kind of other big things in the city. Nice. Um, like, I'm the guy that granted Frida for... Oh, so many years that y'all heard about Big Creed before y'all seen Big Creed on the big screen. I'm the guy that actually did that. Nice, nice. Uh, That's that's super dope because you know what Freela is on my Netflix and Hulu right now so <laughs> <laughs> that's super dope I, I want to know coming from somebody that work with bosses all the time Michael what do you classify like how, what, in your opinion what makes somebody a boss well I mean we spend our own money uh, we nice. take chances uh, we believe in stuff that other people don't believe in and uh we work at it. I mean, we won sometimes, we lose sometimes. We have more wins than losses, you know, but we have lost. Uh, and I tell anybody in any business, win before you criticize somebody and lose. Yeah, yeah, you there you go. You gotta be a winner. You know, like somebody say, man, he lost his house. Okay, you own out? <laughs> yeah. So, right. yeah. Right. I even talk about a lost house, about losing the house and you never owned out. Yeah. Right. Right, True. it's like we, we we speaking apples and oranges right, right now. Right, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, see, I, I had a house to lose. How about right. you? Right, you know. But the boss. I mean, it's like this. If you believe in anything, you know, and you try to perfect it on your own or with a team, 
Right. You're a boss to me. Right. You know? Absolutely. Uh, those that try, I believe anybody that tries something is a boss. Mm-hmm. People that don't try anything because they're afraid of, 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 of failure, mm. those are the people that I'm going to be about. Mm. Right. Those are the people that work for the bosses. <laughs> Basically. Yeah, for sure. Well, that's what's up because, you know, um, I'm glad that you mentioned failures and wins and stuff like that because a lot of people think that when you become a boss or if you are a boss, you just can never lose. You just mm. can never not be a winner. And that's not true because it takes losses to gain wins. It takes those downfalls to know what brings you up and what elevates you, your brand, your, you know what I'm saying, image, whatever it may be. So I'm glad that you, you mentioned that, you know, to become a boss or to be a boss, you have to have a failure at something. Yeah. Well, every, even every big boss, I mean, from Donald Trump on down to whoever you want to name, uh, they have lost. They've been bankrupt before. Mm-hmm. You know, they all depend on what, what classification of bankruptcy they won't call it. Right. But the good part about some of those people, they have friends who, like, even if they go broke or go bankrupt, they can make a phone call and get another five hundred million dollars right. uh, loan to wow. start in over again. But <laughs> right. again, because you're a winner, some people will take that chance and give you five hundred million dollars because they know you're one before. So right. some people are not afraid to take that chance and give you, you know, five hundred million. Just think of that. Somebody give you five hundred million dollars. Wow. Because you just told me I lost my own money. Right. By trying too much. R- right. Well I got it together <laughs> now. I, I got it together now. I figured it all out. But if I had another five hundred million dollars, just where all I could bring back to the table. Mm. And when you hear somebody that done that and come back with ten billion dollars, right. I won't be on the same too. Right. right. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. Especially I don't bank well. If you loan me five hundred million, I can't bank ten billion 10 strong. Billion. Ten billion yeah. strong. That's nine and a half billion dollars stronger <laughs> <laughs> than before. Well, I feel like we I tell you what, if that's the number they reported, just imagine the number they didn't report. Oh, yeah, that oh, cash yes under indeed. the table. Yes, indeed. Yeah. The ones hidden in the safes and yeah. stuff. <laughs>